Yo, what up, YouTube? What's happening? How you guys doing? Ah, uh, so as you probably saw by the title, I'm gonna go over my cooling system today. You know, to be honest with you, I haven't filmed any races. Nothing much has gone down. I've been going out of town and stuff, so I'm gonna pull one of those, uh... You know, everybody's asking me for this video, bro, so I'm gonna make one. Yeah, nobody's asked me to make this, but... <laughs> But uh, when I do take the truck out at the track or whatever, uh, one of the things I get asked the most is about my radiator. Because if you guys have seen this truck before, the radiator is in the bed. So you can see there, it is in the back. Okay, so the question I get asked the most is does this truck overheat? And yeah, unfortunately it does. Um, doesn't always overheat it has to be a pretty hot day uh, probably about 80 plus degrees and it, it'll overheat at about a you know I want to say like 10 mile drive the the track let me see the tracks about 15 miles I think from my house and the track is 12 miles from my house so I can make it from here and I can almost get to the track and I'll be about 200, 205, 210 degrees. So yeah, it does overheat, but that's on a, on a super hot day. And you know, we could do things to make it not overheat. We could maybe add a bigger fan or switch some things up on the setup or put a bigger radiator, but it's not really a huge concern for us just because I don't daily the truck. I don't drive it during the day. Most of the time that I do drive the truck, it's at night when uh, we're out racing and after, you know, during the summer, after about 6, 7 p.m., the truck won't overheat. I can drive it anywhere. What I do have to do is put the tailgate down and that helps a lot with the flow of the air and that helps keep it cool, but <clears throat> as far from there on out, I can drive it wherever. I've driven it all over town, just getting to race spots and things like that and it doesn't give me a single problem. So it only gives me problems when it's hot outside and that's really why we haven't really done anything to fix that or to address that problem. Uh, but I I know if, if we needed to, we, we would be able to figure something out. As you guys can see there, these are my water lines. There's one right here and there's one right there. Both of those are inch and a half, like I said, and then my lines run two. Guess what? A stock water pump, stock LS water pump. This is actually an LS1 water pump. I don't think that makes a difference as far as like 5.360 or whatever. I'm pretty sure they're all the same uh, gallons per minute. How many gallons per minute is that? I do not know. <laughs> As well as a stock water pump, I'm also running a inline electric pump. That's a pump from Jegs that's 20 gallons per minute. So I have the stock one and the electric one. So even though this truck does overheat, the nice thing about having an electric pump, an electric fan, is when I do overheat, I just pull over, turn my truck off, leave my electric pump on and my fan on and it will drop 15 degrees in like 10 minutes or less it drops temperature quick when the trucks off and you just have the electric pump running and the fan running it will really drop your temperatures really quick so that's the cool thing so that's why it's not a big problem that this truck does overheat when it's hot number one i don't really drive it i don't daily it or anything so it's not a problem like I said when I do drive this truck it's to go street race and that's usually at night obviously sometimes we get ratchet during the day but not always so why did I move this radiator one day I was hanging out in the garage me and my boy Sabino we had just finished making the manifolds and we're like well it's time to put these damn turbos in and you know we started Messing with stuff, uh, trying to make these turbos, trying to decide where I was going to put these turbos and how I was going to make the intercooler fit. 
which is right here and the radiator fit and then I was gonna need a bunch of piping and I was just sitting here like you know going bananas trying to figure this out then the boy David shows up and he goes I should just throw that in the back and I was like well I've looked into it before and all the S10 forums I've seen are a bunch of negative saying it won't ever work and blah 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 and that's like a race truck thing and so that's kind of why I didn't want to do it but he's like nah throw it back I was like well I guess it'd be a pretty cool idea so I decided to put it in the back and I actually originally used PVC pipe to put it back there so I ran PVC all the way to the back and it actually worked for a little bit but hot water and PVC don't go well together you know it didn't leak or anything but wherever I didn't brace the PVC it would sag and also the clamps would eventually just collapse the PVC from how hot it was getting so I got rid of the PVC and did the exhaust piping by the way the exhaust cost me about $160 uh, that was for labor, material, install, bent, and everything. So then we put it in the back, and now I had all this space up here. So now I just put my turbo there. Saved a bunch of aluminum. So my charge pipes, if you've seen my cold side video, they literally just go from here to there. Um, not even like you can do it with 190 on each side for that one same thing on that side straight to the intercooler and then up so I saved all kinds of aluminum by moving it um, I think it looks a lot nicer up here without the radiator I know I don't have like a super clean bay and that's not what I was going for because this is not a, a show truck this is a go truck so that was the reason that was the main reason I moved it was for space cuz honestly it was a lot of now that it works and I can drive the truck and everything it's dope but at first it was it was a real pain in the ass to get it to work it was a bunch of trial and error really like I said PVC didn't work and then all kinds of stuff and then I had to add the other pump and all that as well. I wouldn't consider this a very hard job to do. I mean, you just pay an exhaust shop 160 bucks. And I don't know how much exhaust ch shops charge uh, wherever you guys are all from. But, you know, I think it's totally worth it. It saves a bunch of space up there. And, I mean, honestly, with probably more fan. I want to say it's more fan because... I don't know. I don't know what I could do to get this thing to actually not overheat on a hot day I really don't know what I could do but you know I don't know if it's getting the it's probably not even getting the best airflow here because you know beds are kind of designed to not catch a bunch of air but you know I didn't want this radiator sticking up out of my bed either so I wanted it like this you know mounting it was pretty easy this is just some metal bought at Home Depot bent it like an L, bent it the opposite way here and then the, on all four corners and bolted it down. And then we just obviously drilled a hole right here with a hole saw, one right there, one for the lower hose. See, you can see that's the upper one, goes up into there. And the back, the lower one starts around here and then goes back or forward to the front of the truck, I guess come here to the side of the truck and there is my electric water pump from Jags see there's all the exhaust pipe that runs there so I totally forgot which direction this is pushing water I want to say it's pulling it from this direction and going that way towards the front of the truck and this is on the lower hose hard pipe I guess you could call it so I just cut here and then put it in but I want to say that's flowing this way towards the front of the truck from the lower radiator hose yeah so lower radiator hose and that's the way it flows it flows it should flow this way I can't be 100% sure there's a flow thing somewhere on here but 
can't find it. So if you do buy that pump, it's about $180. And you have to buy these fittings with it. And those will go from your hose. So you can hook up a... You gotta buy two of these fittings. They're like... I don't know, they were kind of expensive. I want to say they are like 40 bucks for both of them. There's a part number right there. This brand also makes... This brand also makes... Very good... They make very good water pumps. They're pretty pricey though. So I'll give you guys the part number for mine. The one, the one I bought from Jegs. Like I said, it was $180. Clone fan... You know, I don't remember how much I paid. I think it was like, I don't know. I don't, I really don't remember. It was pretty good CFM. You know, I had this, this fan in the Datsun and this radiator is actually from the Datsun too. So I didn't really want to buy new stuff. And I, I didn't really have to, especially because there's like, had to be custom to fit this stuff anyways. So I just have that fan. I right now I have it pushing somebody actually recommended I should maybe try having this fan pull because this this can push or pull so I may have it pull and just to see what it does because their theory was is the air is gonna come like this and boom and then under here and then I can pull it up I don't know I don't know if that really makes any sense, but I might try it just just because I mean like I said the truck overheats anyways, but Yeah, I don't know, it's pretty cool. I like having my radiator in the back. So, pros of having your radiator in the back. You got a bunch of space in the front. You got a bunch of space in the front that's really cool you know it, you know i mean it's not like it's ugly or anything i mean it can be ugly i think it looks cleaner without it up there so i mean the only downside i guess is my truck overheats but it's not like i need it to not overheat right now i don't need a daily this thing or anything it's not like i was going to use this truck to carry anything that that is taking up space for i also kind of did it for weight you know this you know how much this radiator with water weighs back here i don't know but i mean it's gonna help me you know these trucks are pretty light in the back there's no weight back here and you know that was kind of the other thing i was like you know what i can put that back there i'll have some weight a bunch of space in the front i just won't have to deal with it in the front i am thinking of maybe one day kind of doing some sort of little like rolling of this back here or like some sort of flare and then doing like some sort of scoop right here right around in here and we can go air goes like that oh look i have a hole right here and i'm not using i can probably do that see just thought of something right now anyways a little scoop with some tubes that go that way some nice aluminum or something that goes right in there so we can get some airflow to it i mean i've seen guys that like drift and stuff with their 240s they do it in that like back little window they have the air going in through there and they have a tube ran to the radiator but yeah i definitely recommend putting the radiator in the back to really anybody i don't care what you drive especially if you drive a little truck or a truck that's going to be for racing I definitely recommend it. It's it's great. I love it to be honest. That's pretty much it guys. I'm pretty sure I went over all the basics at least of how I got my radiator in the back and how much I like it and how much I hate it. Thank you guys all for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget we're selling shirts guys. Oh, check that out. That's the back. That's the front. We have black black shirts and uh, black hoodies. We're also going to be taking orders for some camo hoodies. Those look pretty sweet. Uh, thank you to everybody that's bought one. I really, really do appreciate it a lot.
appreciate the support. And hopefully I can get some street races this, this time around at Streetcar Takeover Phoenix. We're going to be headed over there. Thank you all for watching. Se la lavan.